Thanks for joining us in our week of prayer. As you know, this year's theme is Awakening, and today's topic is evangelism. Jesus said in Matthew 5.14 that Christ followers are the light of the world. Jesus calls us to be witnesses of His grace, yet many times we can let other things dim our light for the Lord. We need an awakening in evangelism. The first key to evangelism is relationship. Relationships with lost people. I'm a Christian today because a neighbor lady befriended my mom when we moved to a new town. Through that relationship, my mom, then my dad, myself, and my sister all received Christ. Most people become Christians because somebody connected with them and then they saw and heard the love of Jesus through them. Let me ask you a question. Who do you know that really needs Jesus? What name popped into your mind? A friend, family member, classmate, a colleague at work? That person who you thought of is the one that the Lord wants you to actively reach out to in 2024 and build a relationship with. As we build relationships with not yet Christians, prayer is essential to our evangelism efforts. It is key to a person receiving Christ. There are three areas to focus on as you pray about God using you in evangelism. First, pray for boldness in witnessing. If you're like me, when God presents me with a witnessing opportunity, I get a little tense and nervous. It causes a small amount of fear. What we need to do is recognize that this is a spirit of fear and it is not from the Lord. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. We need to pray for boldness. Proverbs 21.8 says, The righteous are bold as a lion. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to us by the blood of the Lamb. We can have confidence that God is with us and is helping us to share His grace. Besides praying for boldness, the second thing we should pray for is that our witness will be effective. In his second letter to the church in Thessalonica, chapter 3, verse 1, Paul instructed the believers to pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified, just as it is with you. That word swiftly means to have free course, that the word we share would go wherever it needs to go in a person's mind, heart, and emotions and accomplish its work. The reason we need to pray for the Word to have free course is that lost people have been blinded to the good news of salvation. In 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4, Paul said the gospel is veiled to the perishing whose minds the God of this age has blinded. There is a veil over their minds. There are thinking processes that prevent them from seeing the gospel. This keeps them in bondage and that brings us to our third and final way to pray for not yet Christians, which is that we need to pray for lost people to be released from spiritual bondage. This is where you name them by name. You see, even though we don't see it, we are fighting an invisible but very real spiritual war. In the famous Armor of God passage in Ephesians 6, the Apostle Paul said in verse 12 that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the rulers of darkness of this age, and spiritual hosts of wickedness. Our prayers are the only thing that can set free the unsaved from this blindness. Paul instructs us in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. As we intercede for lost people by name, we ask the Lord to help us identify any strongholds, mental arguments, and the things they have heard and seen that have become raised up and become a high thing over the gospel. It is exalted over the true knowledge of who God is and His plan for salvation. Maybe the Lord reveals that they've heard false teaching that's led their minds astray from the truth. Or maybe God needs to demolish obstacles to the gospel that have been placed in their souls. For example, 
it's possible they have encountered a person who claimed to follow Christ, but they lied or cheated or committed some sin against that person. This act of hypocrisy could be a seed the devil has planted in their mind to make them think they don't need Christ because there's no difference between them and other Christians. Another possible stronghold we can pray against are evil spirits that are influencing them. Here are some examples. A spirit of pride can make one think they're good enough the way they are. They don't need Christ. Or it can manifest in a haughty, puffed up attitude that there's no God, he's not real, and there's no such thing as sin. A spirit of bitterness could harden a person's heart that closes them off from receiving forgiveness because they don't want to forgive someone who has offended them. Or maybe they're bitter at God for something bad that happened. They don't believe God is a good God because a God of love would have never let that horrible thing happen to them. A spirit of apathy can make someone think, yeah, I'll get right with God, but just not now. I've got plenty of time. I'll do it later. A spirit of greed can blind a person to what's really important in life. They live for earthly treasures instead of true spiritual riches, and they won't surrender to Jesus. A spirit of lust or pleasure can cause someone to hunger for their desire, whatever it is, more than to have God in their life. They know that to become a Christian means they have to let go of their sin that they think satisfies them in a way that following Jesus can't. That mindset is exalted over the knowledge that they need to repent. As you can see from these few brief examples, there are many spirits that can produce spiritual strongholds in people's lives that cause them to argue with the message of faith, repentance, and the love and forgiveness of God. That's why we need to wait on the Lord and let Him reveal to us those strongholds that are blinding people and holding them in bondage. Also, we can spend much time praying in the Spirit in our prayer language for people because the Holy Spirit knows how to intercede for the lost. Lee Thomas said, there is absolutely no reason for even one single soul to die and go to hell because Christ has already paid their redemption price. And the only reason why anyone will go to hell is that we have not taken our place of authority and bound the strong man insisting on their salvation. The devil will not release them until we make him. Right now, I would like us to pray for the person whose name you thought of when I asked the question, who do you know that really needs Jesus? As we do, we're going to pray for God to open their minds and deliver them from bondage. Pray that we'll be bold to share and that what we share is effective. Join me right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for Adam, for Bert, Jenny, Joe, Mary, and all the other names that people thought of. You know who they are. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would remove the veil from their mind. What's blinding them? Remove spirits of lust, bitterness, pride, jealousy, greed, addiction. Lord, destroy any false teaching that is causing them to not see truth clearly. Jesus, remove any arguments they have against the gospel if they've seen hypocrisy in Christ followers. Lord, I pray you'd tear down strongholds in their life. And right now, Lord God, I just claim Acts 26, 18, that you would open their eyes in order for them to turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they might receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in you. In Jesus' name, set them free, Father. Lord, I pray for boldness for ourselves. Give us open doors and then confidence to speak and to walk through those doors. And Lord, I pray for those who are not baptized in the Spirit. Lord, that you would give them a hunger to be clothed with power 
so that they can be effective witnesses. And for those of us who are, God, we would seek a greater empowerment, that we would want more of your infilling than ever before. Jesus, I pray that you would use us to reach our community, our workplaces, our schools, our neighborhoods, our family and friends. I thank you, Lord God, that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. I pray that you would help us to be the light of the world and to shine brightly. In your all-powerful name we pray, amen. Thank you for taking the time to be part of the week of prayer. Let's awaken evangelism in our lives by praying for the lost. Pray for them to be set free from bondage, for us to be bold and to have an effective witness. May God richly bless you as you influence your radius of relationships and help all people find and follow Jesus.